All right, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's your good friend Possible here, and I'm back in action with another look at the Phoenix Comic Con Film Festival that happened in 2016. Today, we'll be looking at the Star Wars block. And these are fan made films made by people who um, obviously love Star Wars a lot. And uh, let's get right into it and see how they did and what they did. First off, Jedi Club. Now, this one was very good, but there's just one moment, I swear, I still don't understand what exactly happened. A lot of these I would love to see again, uh, even though they had to start and restart this one, I think once or twice, that was pretty funny there. But Jedi Club was exactly like Fight Club, had the same kind of elements. Um, throughout the film, they show flashes of Han Solo, like they did in Fight Club. And it's about this guy, they're at this Star Wars fanboys help group or something like that. And if you remember Fight Club, Edward Norton one time had this one big guy crying right next to him. And that's how it starts. They're in this support group. This guy um, is crying next to him because basically their problem is that they lost their toys. They had to give up their toys for their girlfriends or something like that. So all their Star Wars collectibles and everything are all gone and everything. So they're crying over it and they're lost and everything. And at one point, they go back, and I forget why, but they can't go back into their room anymore. It was locked off and it was condemned or they're being evicted or something like that. And they get really upset and eventually the guy pulls out his lightsaber and the guy's like, what do you think you're going to do with that lightsaber? And he's like, I'm going to open the door with it. And just as you think he's going to make a move, this is a part that they did really well. Because what happens is, you know he has a choice, one or two choices. He either cuts it and it breaks open, or he doesn't cut it and it doesn't break open. Well, they actually went to a third option. The guy takes his lightsaber, of course it's a toy lightsaber, and whacks the other guy across the face with it. You know? So I thought that was really funny. And they get into this idea that they should just be, you know, fighting each other with um, lightsabers and stuff, doing sword battles and everything. And so you have this moment where it's the Fight Club montage. This guy is walking through the street and every once in a while he's inside the Fight Club arena where they're battling with lightsabers. And at another time... He sees these people and their faces are all beat up and everything. And he knows why they're beat up. He, they're beat up because of Fight Club and everything. So, eventually, there's this moment where it all changes. And take from it what you will. At one moment, it's dark. Two guys are fighting with their lightsabers. And they, you, you ever seen the sword movies where they get in the, in the death lock? You know, where one guy is holding his sword right up against the other guy's sword and they're staring at each other. And what happens is they, the lights are turned on all of a sudden. And instead of having a big group of people, it's this, like maybe four or five guys all of a sudden. These women come in ready to work out in regular clothes, if my memory serves, because I swear they tricked me on this one. But I think that was their intention. The girls are standing there, like I said, in regular clothes, getting ready for a Zumba class and everything. They start to argue back and forth between the girl and the guy who's the head guy who's battling his buddy at, with the toy lightsabers. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it seems the girls change their clothes. They're now wearing empire-like stuff. So one's dresses like, you know, Darth Vader. The other is dresses like a black stormtrooper. And this one girl comes in as Slave Leia, which I am grateful for because she was my only Slave Leia of, of the whole 2016 Comic-Con. I feel cheated, you know. I don't feel I had a successful Comic-Con unless I see a Slave Leia. But the point is this. We saw a lot of rays. I'll say that at Phoenix Comic-Con. There were a lot of rays. But... The point is this, at the end, I, I'm still stuck on what happened. Did they really change their clothes? Was I just wrong about their clothes? So if there was a mind 
twist that they threw in there, it succeeded. Uh, eventually, the guy leaves. He's upset. He's going to go get his toys back. But, of course, he runs back. He wants to see the slave Leia. And I don't blame him. They didn't show the slave Leia. I felt cheated by that. All right, next up, Legacy of the Force. Now, this one is a much bigger production than anything else. How do I know? They've got their own movie poster. That's how I know. Um, and besides, this production value, much higher than pretty much anything you really see at Comic-Con regular, regularly. What happened in this one? Yeah, I wish I could tell you that. This is what I would love to say again, see, see again, because there was a lot going on in this one, and I mean a lot. You basically have this, the main Star Destroyer going through either an Astro board Belt or a Nova or something that just looks really cool as this other ship boards it. I think there's a space battle going on outside as well. But here comes the Jedi, Jaina. And I'm mispronouncing that word. I, I might, her name, I apologize. Let me put it to you this way. There's something to do with a genetic bomb, poison bomb. So it's up to Han Solo and Princess Leia's female twin to board it to stop her male twin brother from doing something about this also. At one point, I thought he was trying to keep it. At another point, I thought he was trying to destroy it. Doesn't matter, we have a lightsaber battle anyway, and it was really cool. The one part I didn't like, and again, I shouldn't say that because I need to see this again two or three times to understand what I saw. But what happened was she goes in like to this medical center after using the force and, you know, taking people down without using her lightsaber yet. And she runs into this one lady who's an invalid, kind of captured in all that. I'm not sure who she was or what part she played. Obviously, they were friends at one point. Um, and she needs to stop her brother, but at the same time save this one girl. Um, but she's, but that's even a secondary, even the girl doesn't want to be saved per se. I forget why she was taken by, by alive in the first place. That said, let me just put it to you this way. This was a very complicated story in comparison. It's not a bad story. It's just a really heavy with all these details and all these names flying around and, you know, Star Wars this and Star Wars that. If you were to pick up a book of the old Star Wars before Force Awakens comes up, came out, then, and you were to open up the book to the middle of the page, then that's what you have here. Or how about this? If you were to just walk into Empire Strikes Back after the Battle of Hoth, which you did not see, that's what you're experiencing here. A lot of names, a lot of people, a lot of questions of who's who and what's what. Not really sure what was going on. But... Wow, did they have great production value. And you know, you, it looked like you were really on the ship, and the ships were pretty good too, and the acting was spot on. Don't get me wrong. The actors knew their parts and played their parts beautifully. As for the question of, you know, who was who and what really was happening, I'm afraid I didn't read the book, so even I don't know that for sure. I enjoyed it, though, immensely. Um, they did a very good job of this one, Better than I might say of this one. This one, The Dark and Awakening, was a long Star Wars fan film. You could definitely tell the production value was cheap, as you can imagine. Not a problem, though. Not a problem at all. I forgave the bad green screen special effects. I forgave the bad battle, you know. When it comes to this one, though, what happens is you start off, there's this lady who's red, worshipping this one stone as the Jedi come, and her Sith buddies intervene, and they try to fight, but it doesn't work out. There's this one moment also where she gets captured, okay? After a pretty lame battle, she gets captured and brought before the tribunal. 
they got to decide what to do for her. Her trial's over. She's guilty. And they're like, so what? Do we kill her? That's not our way. We're Jedi. Uh, we have her captured. Let's just keep her incarcerated. We could do this. We could do that. She just dies. That's it. She just dies. Now, one thing I will say that I did like is that 4,000 years passed. And her beautiful, pristine temple is now ruins. Somehow, she just left that rock there. <coughs> the Jedi also left that rock there. I kind of missed that part. Instead, the Jedi are turning this into their training camp. Out in the outer rims, far away from everyone else. And they're on like a field trip. You know, you have the students, you have the teachers, and they're here to look around. All of a sudden, the Sith show up. Now, grant you, try to imagine it like this. These Jedi are on the beach. The Sith show up ooh, downtown, let's just say. Okay, there's distance between them. So these two, this one Jedi decides he wants to go view the ruins, learn from it, bring some students with him. But while he's there, Mandalorian show up with Sith to find the rock and other things. So they're looking around with their tricorders. Sorry, that's Star Trek reference, but you know what I mean. They're scanners and they're trying to find the rock. And the, the Jedi show up and I don't know when they saw them. It's like he sees them, but he doesn't react right away. He sees them, but he doesn't just, just say, okay, guys, you're students. Let's just run back. The Mandalorians come out there. They shoot one of the guys, the Jedi. The Jedi kill the remaining Mandalorians, and the, what else happens? Um, the battle ensues. The Jedi, oh my gosh, invisible warrior routine. They're supposed to be quote unquote fog, about as thick as you know your house right now. But the fog, the fog gets in there, and the Jedi can't are not supposed to be able to see, and the woman like you know. Punches them, punches them, punches them. Doesn't do any kill shots or anything. Eventually, they are able to use the force and they kill her. And um, apparently, I think I see her later on. But this one suffers because it was so long. And the production value just didn't last very well or anything. And there was this one moment also where this, this one Jedi encounters this other Sith Lord. And they don't fight. He's like... I have plans for you. And then they cut away. They don't really explain what's happening. You don't get a sense of what's going on. And of course it ends with the Sith getting the rock, the, the gem, and you know, the, the lady coming back to life. You know, It ends on that note. So you get it. It's her dark awakening. She's coming back 4,000 years after being presumed dead. She's resurrected by the power of this rock. And she's more powerful than ever. But now it's to the Jedi to stop her and everything. So... Wasn't very good, not by any stretch of the imagination. They were definitely just reading off of their cue cards. You know, the fight scenes were as good as it could be expected, but it was just so long. If they just would have shortened some of these parts a little bit better, it would have been fine. But other than that, it, it really suffers more from length than from anything else. All right, last up for the Star Wars A Toy Story. This one wins because it was just so gosh darn cute. You know what I mean? Basically, this guy is talking with his girlfriend. She doesn't like it. He has all these Star Wars, and it's time for him to grow up and get rid of them. A little dated. You know, maybe if this wasn't, if this was back in the 90s, I could understand this one. But this is, you know, the new millennium. Star Wars is more popular than ever. And those kind of toys he has are worth hundreds more than when he bought them. Assuming he bought them from when he was a young age, or they're his father's or grandfather's. Uh, sickening to think of that it's that old now. <laughs> but you get the idea. The point is, uh, his girlfriend wants to get rid of him, so he decides to sell him on eBay. He leaves the room. The toys come to light. They're afraid. They don't want to be sold to some other person. They like the way he takes care of them. So, but at the same time, they decide to reach out to this other one, Bobo Fett 74, I think it was, or something like that, 77 maybe. But the point is, they at one point they say, let's not be sold. Another point they're saying, let's be, get sold to this person. So the guy puts the toys in his um, 
car and drives away with them. And this is the best, okay? At one point, he's being tailed by the police. So the ships take off. Luke in the X-Wing, Darth Vader in the TIE Fighter, and Han Solo in the um, Millennium Falcon. And it's just like you saw in the movie, Episode 4, A New Hope, the trench run with Luke. He needs to stop the cops. Vader tries to intervene. Han comes out of the sun and, you know, shoots and uh, blows and... And destroys the TIE fighter. Not, not, not destroy it, like in the, like in the movie, it, it flies away. Uh, Luke fires the tow and torpedoes into the exhaust of the car, stopping it, stopping the police car. Of course, at some point during the whole chasing, this kid does not realize he's being chased by the cops, you know? He goes back. He, he meets up with the girl, doesn't know where his TIE fighter is, doesn't seem to care too much. Brings his Millennium Falcon and his X-Wing and all his toys to the place to meet the girl. And it turns out she's a hot chick as well. She wants to see this um, Star Wars thing and wonder if he wants to join. He calls his girlfriend saying, you know, pretty much, he doesn't say it directly, but it's a breakup text, which was really funny. And obviously he found a girl who appreciates Star Wars and everything. Uh, funny, cute really good special effects for this kind of story. The special effects are really awesome. And I just really enjoyed it. It's the top one of all the four for sure. And it was short. Very, very short. This one was short and solid. They left nothing out. Simple story, simple premise, great special effects. Pretty good acting too. All right, guys, that's it for me for now. We'll see you at 2017 Comic-Con. And until then, we'll see you at the theaters.